Marcus Conti reporting. Welcome to the show today. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Welcome, world. Welcome, everybody, to Marcus's world. <laughs> so, I'm going to speed read this, the morning news. There's nothing, nothing outstanding. It seems to be uh, the Jeffrey uh, Epstein case <clears throat> overshadowing everything right now. And as predicted, that was the. It's going to become the political football. It's going to replace. You, if you if you're uh, wanting for Russia Gate, now you're going to get Pedo Gate, right? The object is to pin the other side. Who's closest to the pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein? Is it the Democrats, the dirty Democrats, the perverts, the Me Too crowd, or is it the Trump crowd, the repressed conservatives that that like children? You know it's that shit. So who is it? Who's it going to be? Who's going to who's going to get caught holding the bag on Epstein uh, stuff? So uh, let's first start with this story. This is a good one, man. Shit is crazy, right? Loud fart helps police sniff out suspect hiding from arrest. Ooh. This is a true story, right? So Missouri law, enforce, law enforcement was able to sniff out the location of a person wanted for controlled substances over the weekend after the suspect passed gas so loudly that it gave up his or her hiding spot. Wow. That's just, you can't make this up. The Clay County Sheriff's Department posted on Facebook to share how flatulence played a role in the arrest outside of the city of Liberty, Missouri. Quote, I've gotten, uh, if you've got a felony warrant for your arrest, the cops are looking for you and you pass gas so loud it gives up your hiding spot, you're definitely having a, quote, shitty day. <laughs> the sheriff said. The department posted a photo of the officer using uh, police dogs in a wooded area as part of the search. Hmm. Now, did the police sniff out the sniff the fart, or did the dog sniff the fart? Uh, is, it a, is it a fart sniffing dog, or is it a fart sniffing cop? Uh, and what about what about if the cop one cop farts and say, "Hey, man, did you just fart? Fucking dude, did you just fart, man? Come, or is that somebody else? Uh, does that come out? Where did that shit come from, man?" <laughs> I smell that shit, man. Fucking you fought it. We've got, um, so, so there it is, right? It's just silly, just a silly story, right? Here's the cops walking with the dog. It's a real story, man. Fucking, hey, you know what I mean? Hey, when technology fell, sniff out the fart. Right? They don't know who he is yet. They don't know who, the, they haven't released the information. So here's a, here's a, a rather important story, right? Trump v. Trump versus Twitter, right? Remember when Trump said uh, to Twitter, you can't tell me who I can ban and who I can't ban? Well, the courts have decided, yes, they can ban. They can di di dictate who you can ban and who you can't ban if you're the president of the United States. If you are a public uh, official paid by the United States government, you must uh, allow everybody free speech. That's how the court ruled. According to the court, the First Amendment does not permit a public official using a social media account, account for, quote, all matters of official purposes to exclude people from an otherwise open online dialogue because they disagree with the official. Ah, that's true, man. Sorry, Trump. You missed. You, you, you lose on that one. They're right. You got you to side with the court on that one. Now, if, it's, um, if Trump was... You know, Mr. Trump, the billionaire, you know, a private citizen, that's a different story. But Trump uses Twitter for official business, right? There's no doubt about it, right? He's, you know, he's so many deals have gone down. Um, you know, millions of followers. He, he does he does international deals. He calls out the press. He's doing he makes major announcements using Twitter. So that's uh, that's how that that cookie crumbled. Uh, Trump. Trump loses in terms of, uh, you know, trying to win that, uh, trying to win that argument. Right? So what else is going on? So let's talk about this. So a co I told you when I was standing in front of the court, actually standing in front of Jeffrey Epstein's door, broken down door, I told you that, that uh, Acosta, Alex Acosta, right, um, the now labor secretary would become a, a very, very big name in the story. And sure enough, here he comes, right? U.S. Secretary of Labor Acosta on Tuesday defended his controversial handling of sex, uh, child sex abuse uh, allegations against Jeffrey Epstein more than a decade ago and said the new charges lodged by Manhattan federal prosecutors could, quote, more fully bring him to justice. Uh, so he's, he's coming out. He's talking about it. Trump talked about it. I'll play that piece, right? 
And um, so they're jockeying, right? Leading Democrats uh, uh, called for his resignation, Nancy Pelosi for, for one. Right? So here's Acosta's uh, Twitter. Now that new evidence and additional testimony is available, the New York prosecution offers an important opportunity to more fully bring him to justice. Let's look at some of the comments. <laughs> what? Dude, what? This is crazy, man. So Nancy Pelosi, too. Nancy Pelosi calls for Labor Secretary to, design, to resign over Epstein deal. Now, it, it is sad that the, the lead Democrat and, and uh, all the Democratic you know, players are fussing over this case, right? Because they got nothing else, right? They're not going to support... They're not going to support policy for the people, a.k.a., uh, you know, Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or any of those characters. Well, none of the progressive wing of the left. So what do they got to do? They got to come up with some other distraction, and it's going to be Pedogate. I'm telling you, that's what's going on right now. Right? They're going to try to, you know, oust this guy, and, and if he doesn't leave, if, if, uh, if um, Acosta doesn't step down, they're going to say Trump is covering for him, and then somehow Trump becomes the pedophile. Uh, so here's Trump in his own words, defending, I don't know if it's a defense of Acosta, so we'll, we'll listen, let's listen. Well, you know, I, I met Secretary Acosta this first time I know uh, when I made the deal to bring him on into the administration. I can tell you that for two and a half years, he's been just an excellent Secretary of Labor. He's done a fantastic job. Now, part of it is our economy is so good, our Unemployment numbers are at record lows. You know, so many good things are happening. But the fact is, he's been a very good Secretary of Labor. What happened 12 or 15 years ago with respect to when he was a U.S. attorney, I think in Miami. Is it Miami? Yes, I uh, You know, if you go back and look at everybody else's uh, decisions, whether it's a U.S. attorney or an assistant U.S. attorney or a judge, you go back 12 or 15 years ago or 20 years ago and look at their past decisions, I would think you'd probably find that they would wish they maybe did it a different way. I do hear that there were a lot of people involved in that decision, not just him. I can only say this from what I know uh, and what I do know is that he's been a great, really great Secretary of Labor. Uh, the rest of it we'll have to look at. We'll have to look at it very carefully. But you're talking about a long time ago. And again, it was a decision made, I think, not by him, but by a lot of people. So we're going to look at it very carefully. We'll be looking at that very carefully. Okay? Okay. Anybody else? Well, I knew him like everybody in Palm Beach knew him. I mean, people in Palm Beach knew him. He was a fixture in Palm Beach. Uh, I had a falling out with him a long time ago. I don't think I've spoken to him for 15 years. Uh, I wasn't a fan. I was not, yeah, a long time ago. I'd say maybe 15 years. Uh, I was not a fan of his. That I can tell you. I was not a fan of his. So. Uh, I feel very badly, actually, for Secretary Acosta because I've known him as being somebody that works so hard and has done such a good job. I feel very badly about that whole situation. Well, so that's Trump's full statement, right? Now he did a, he did a little backpedal there because you remember he said that uh, he's on the record saying uh, Jeffrey Epstein, he's a great guy, he likes girls just like I like girls. He likes him a little young, too, right? He's on the record saying that, right? He's pals with him, right? And now he's saying he's not a fan. I'm not a fan of that guy, right? Now, to Trump's defense, right, that everybody in, in the area in Florida, billionaires, they know each other, right? That's fair. That's fair. I think Trump did a very good job at diffusing this because they are going to try to come at him, right? But it's, I'm just telling you, I'm pointing out how, the, uh, how this thing is rippling right to the top of government, this, this Jeffrey Epstein case. So, so Trump did a good job in, in, um, in, in humanizing what happened. He's down, and, but nonetheless, he has been on Epstein's Lolita Express. That seems to be factual. I don't know. Right? I, don't, I don't know. How many times has he been on the plane? How many times has he been on the plane, Donald? Uh, the, the, you know. But uh, he, he did a good job kind of diff diffusing that stuff. He, um, he makes the point that that billionaires know billionaires. They know each other. And everybody knew him down in Florida. That's, that's very common. So, so Trump gets a couple of points for that one. But they're, they, they're not going to stop, right? So here is, um, oh, this is the other day, Bill Clinton. So you got Trump chirping in, defending himself. Bill Clinton claims he doesn't know nothing about Jeffrey Epstein's alleged crimes. 
I, and that's just factually incorrect. He said that he's only been on the plane four times. The Post confirms uh, based on Fox reporting that he was on uh, Jeffrey Epstein's Lolita Express plane 26 times at a minimum. So Bill Clinton is lying. Trump is coming out defending him, defending his uh, his his secretary of 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 uh, whatever he is, right? The fucking secretary guy Acosta, right? And former prosecutor in Florida that gave Jeffrey Epstein the sweetheart deal, defending him, and um, right? and and uh, who else? And you got Nancy Pelosi saying Pelosi few. Uh, no, that's not the article. <laughs> Sorry. It's early in the morning. So Nancy Pelosi calls for Labor Secretary to resign over Epstein deal. All right, so so the Democrats are are, are attacking. Right, Bill Clinton is distan- distancing <laughs> distancing himself from the uh, from the incident, saying, "Oh no, no, I don't know nothing about this guy. I, I only went down there. He was doing us a favor. He flew us on the plane four times to uh, do uh, uh, Clinton Foundation stuff. That's all it was." So. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called for Labor Secretary Alex Acosta to resign for negotiating a plea deal with Jeffrey Epstein that allowed the multimillionaire, now he's a multimillionaire, I thought he was a billionaire, financer to spend a little more than a, a year in jail on sex crimes. He didn't spend a year in jail. He got work release. He only slept in a, in a private wing of a jail at night and spent 16 hours a day in his mansion in, uh, in Florida. Uh, so, so what else did she say? As a, as U.S. Attorney, he engaged in an unconscionable agreement with Jeffrey Epstein, um, kept secret for for courageous young young victims, whatever. So th- the point is that that Pelosi and the Democrats are now attacking. I see that's unusual. You've got the the Democrats attacking. You've got Trump defending himself, defending his record defending his guy. So again, it's the, the theory that I put out, I don't know, a day or two ago, it seems mushed together, but uh, I said that it's, a, uh, it's, it's probably a hit from the left to, to pin Trump as a pedophile, as, a, as some engagement with... Um, so this is the guy, Alexandra Acacia. Right? So Trump... Bill Clinton still still denying it. So and and meanwhile the Democrats are just feuding with each other. It's a stupid story. I'll get rid of that one. And what what here's just a final a final little story. What we should be paying attention to is this. Right? <clears throat> While all this controversy and all this gossip fl- you know flings through the news and works its way through Washington like a snake, what we really should be focusing on is that the Fed is about under Powell, the Fed chair is about to cut interest rates for the banks again, right, to stimulate the economy for the banks, not for you. What happens every time they do that, income and wealth gets, the income and wealth inequality in this, in this country grows. Uh, you have the billionaires get richer, the poor people get poorer, the stock markets keep going up, people have less money to spend, right? That's what happens when, when, when they keep doing it. It's quantitative easing. It's supposed to be done in the case of an emergency. So... Basically, what they do is the Fed gives banks money on the cheap, sometimes free. Sometimes they'll even pay the bank to lend money. So the bank lends money to, at, at, like it is in Japan. It's a negative interest rate right now for banks. Banks will lend money to you on the cheap or for free with, with unlimited time, probably 100 years to pay it back. Right? They make 23%. They, their assets increase. They give themselves million-dollar bonuses, and you get stuck holding the debt. So, again, it's a debt-driven economy. It's going to pop. It is a bubble. It will pop. This should be the focus of the election. This should be the focus instead of, you know, running around trying to, trying to, trying to catch, you know, a pedophile from 12 years ago and trying to pin the, the, the incompetence of the government on, you know, somebody. They should be talking about this stuff. So, anyway, Marcus Conti reporting. Oh, let's watch this, man. Take you out. This is a Wayne world. Wayne's world. Yes, takes out, absolutely. Man. I had the same dream. What? No way. Way. Yeah. Okay, we're just about out of time, right? But before we go, we'd like to take a moment here for a Wayne's world salute to the guest jeans girl, Claudia Schiffer. Swing. Swing. Tentpole. 
She's a babe. She's magically babelicious. She tested very high on the stroke ability scale. Okay. Hey, are you through yet? Because I'm getting tired of holding this. Sure, that's what she said. <laughs> okay, so Claudia Schiffer, we salute you. Shawn Wing. Who's you the mega happy ending? Oh, the mega happy ending, that's doable. <laughs> Good night and party on! Party on, Wayne! Party on, Garth. It's Wayne's World! Wayne's World! Party time! Excellent! And we're out!